greener if it were moister. Um, but it stays pretty green. This is the hair cap moss growing out of it. Here it is a little thicker. And this is the hair cap. I said that the hair cap moss made spores on a thing that was on a long stalk. And the capsule where the spores are produced are protected by this little cap. And under magnification, this cap is covered with little pale hairs. And that's why this is called the hair cap moth. Cool. We're here at just the right time of year to see the hair cap. Polytricum communi is the scientific thing. Are we at like the top? And that's, yeah, we are. And that's what most of the moss is there. Back under the sparkler. Do we keep a path saying we've been to the top of Sonoma Mountain? You've done that for Stone Mountain? No, no I don't think there is a path. They should do that. Like the Fireside Girl patches? They have yeah. a patch for everything, like carrying the green notebook patch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or help that. Oh, somebody can crank the Help thy neighbor patch, yeah. Which really is in, is uh, helping Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> yeah. Isabella. Yeah. You got a thing for Phineas. Don't you just love how we love to come up with things? On our girl scout thing, when we were in seniors, they had to um, make your own patch. So I think. Um, they have make your own try it patch bags. I saw some butterfly go over this way. Whatever it was. One way Panola differs from Stone Mountain and Arabia Mountain is this forest up at the very top. And in fact, Panola is missing some plants that are found at Arabia and Stone Mountain because it has this forest on top. At the top of Arabia and the top of Stone Mountain, there are these nice depressions that fill with water after a rain and have water in them from winter and into spring. And there are a couple of federally end endangered plants that grow at the top of Arabia Mountain and the top of Stone Mountain. But that habitat is replaced with forest here at the top of Panola Mountain, and so we don't have those. Each outcrop is different. Mm I said was joined here by a, re a green relative, uh, but like the diamorpha, it's dead now. But this is a rare plant uh, on the state protected plant list called Sedum pusillum, or the granite stone crop. And like the diamorpha, it's dead. It makes it through the winter just on the seeds. There may be a few seeds left in here. Most of them are now here in the litter, in the mosses and pine uh, and cedar uh, litter under the tree. Um, one way you can tell diamorpha from the sedum pusillum is the shape of these, of the fruit. Anyway, uh, it's dead now, but sometime this winter or, or late fall, little green seedlings will pop up all under this tree where it's ready to start another another generation
And, and Jim, what is its relationship to this cedar? It seems to like it under the uh, drip at red edge of the cedar. They are found under these eastern red cedars more often than any other kind of habitat. Um, these, the, the, the same, the same reason we ha there were old-fashioned cedar chests, you would make them out of the wood of this tree because the wood was full of this resin, which gave it a very spicy odor and was repellent to uh, insects. It's probably one reason why we don't see much eating on, uh, on red cedar trees. Those same compounds build up in the soil under a, a cedar tree, and a lot of plants cannot grow under a red cedar because they can't tolerate all those phenols, all of the chemicals that uh, end up in the soil because they're concentrated in the leaves. Yeah. But certain plants like the red sedum, uh, like the, the sedum pusillum that's growing under here, are able to tolerate that. And so they're able to grow there. It's not that they need anything in the cedar, it's that they can tolerate the chemicals that are in the soil under the red cedar. It's not the only plant that makes special chemicals like that. The uh, things like the uh, sumac do the same thing. They help control the competition by changing the soil to make it unfavorable to other species.